Good morning. Am I on? I don't hear myself. Oh, I hear me now. Isn't that funny? I don't hear myself. I did hear myself. I didn't hear myself on that. Anyway, good morning again. How's everyone this morning? Is there anybody here that's enjoying this cold? Yeah, okay, you're my people. If somebody was going to say yes, I was going to say, like, you need to get examined or something because it's not right. It's, it's just literally, it hurts your face when you step outside. Anybody else? And my face gets all blotchy in seconds. Totally not meant for this weather. Anyway, I will move on. I will. Okay. I wanted to share something with you that I read this week. I'm uh, reading a book by David Jeremiah, who's a fantastic author and preacher, by the way. If you get a chance to read any of his stuff, I highly recommend it. Um, and it's a study of Ecclesiastes, so it's kind of interesting. It's a book we don't tend to spend a lot of time studying and reading, but it's talking about uh, Solomon and how he has, you know, had all the wealth, all the power, all the pleasures from different jobs and this successes from everything. And it's this line really caught me, and it says. The drifting came slowly, deceptively, but the further he moved from the Lord and Creator, the greater became his emptiness, frustration, and confusion. Just let that sink in for a minute, because I think we've all been in like ebbs and flows of our walk with Christ. Amen? So it's happened to everybody. There's times when you're really plugged in and things are going well, and then for whatever reason, slowly and deceptively, you seem to drift away. And then you start to feel empty. Things are wrong, and you feel disconnected, and you feel like you can't. How do I get back there? And this really caught me because I, like it was so personal to me. Like I, I can truly look back and think how that's happened in my life. How I've had these times where I felt like I was like literally on fire for God and everything was just, everything in my life really was better. Although I had greater struggles, I think, during those times when I was on fire, but the peace within me was so much better. Anybody else experience that? Right? Like, it, it doesn't mean that the hard times don't like they all of a sudden stop or anything. The, the attack from Satan seems to be greater when we're more on fire. But it's so much easier to walk through them when we're walking closely with God. So I tell you, or say all that, because what I want to remind everybody today is it all it takes is for us to step closer. He's there. He hasn't left. He hasn't moved away from you at all. It's all us. So what better time than right now in this service and not waiting till the uh, praise or the worship time or whatever, instantly. Let's all take that step in closer. Let's do our part to rid ourselves of that empty feeling. And let's just, you know, reunite with Christ and let's get that fire burning again. Let's Let's walk as close as we can to enjoy the peace that he has offered us and has never taken from us. Amen? Why don't you stand with me? We'll open the service in prayer. And I just invite everyone to just lean in. Lean in and enjoy the gift of a relationship with him. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, not only for your word, but, Father, for the people that you've given insight to who can help bring us a greater understanding of it. Father, you've given us the Holy Spirit who is there to help us understand. And, Lord, I pray that each person here today would just find deeper understanding through the Holy Spirit, Lord, of what your word is speaking to us. But I want to thank you, Lord, that you also give us words and songs and words and books, Lord, to just bring it all more into light. And I thank you, Father, that you never leave us, that you are always there waiting, Father, for us to just turn to you and ask the question, turn to you and lean for comfort, 
turn to you for the wisdom, for the healing, for the patience, whatever it might be, Lord. You are a gracious and merciful Father, and we thank you, Lord, for that. As we go into this service today, Father, we just step closer to you, Lord. We step in, and we are looking to reunite with you, Lord, and get our fires burning, Father God, again for you. So, Father, we come to you in this time, in this gathering together, Lord, in your house, just to join together as a family, Lord, with you as our Father, you know, wrapping your arms around each and every one of us and all of us at the same time. And we are going to enjoy this time with you today, Lord. Amen. I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that faith are never enough. Then you came along, and you put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There is nothing better than you. There is nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness. My failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all. Still call me friend, cause you're the God of the mountain, is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's not. to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn mourning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn graves into gardens you turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing better than you, oh, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. You 
turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You are the only one who can. Come. Now is a time to work. a time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Oh, come, just as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Let's go, church. Come. Now is the time to worship. Oh, come. Now is the time Choose to surrender our lives. Willingly our knees will bow. With all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. Come. Now is the time to worship. Oh, come. Now is the time. you are to worship. Oh, come, just as you are before your God. Come. Come, just as you are. Can I just ask, did anybody else notice how those two songs fit with the theme of the opening? Where we talked about the emptiness and how the, what's this opening line of that, the world can't provide the first song? Anyway, I, you heard it, I just can't paraphrase well. And then the next part of it was come and worship. Is that not what we talked about at the beginning? I want you to be fully aware this morning how the Lord speaks to us through every avenue. We, I have no idea what they're going to sing on a Sunday, and I often don't even know what I'm going to say for sure till, you know, I think I know, and then God confirms it as I come through the door. But I just, I love how he ties it all together. And I think the message this morning is so important. The world is not going to give you what you're looking for. And there's no greater way to step into what he has for you than to worship. So, again, in this service today, in this moment, not later, not in this moment, let's worship him. 
Let's step into everything that he has for us, that he is so kind and gracious and merciful enough to send it to us in a reminder. In, it's in his word. It's in the message he gave me for you this morning. It's in the songs that were written here this morning and the voices that are singing them to you. Don't miss the message. Step into it right now, right this second, and just be filled with all the peace and love that he wants to bring to you this morning. I don't care which one you replay, but play one of them. Come, now is the time to worship. Oh, come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Oh, come, now is the time to give. Choose to surrender our lives. Willingly our knees will bow. With all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Oh, come, now is the time. as you are to worship oh come just as you are before your God come come now is the time to worship oh come now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Oh, come, just as you are before your God. Come. We encourage you to just express yourself in your heavenly language this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We honor you. We magnify your name today, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are a great and an awesome God, and we worship you today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated for a moment, and it warmed up a little bit. I tell you, not warm enough, though, that there's mosquitoes. But that's coming, I hope. Right? So uh, I, I think in the announcements, Rob, I don't know if you've managed to get the announcements up there. We're still working on that new pro Oh, look at you, Rob. You're just like a professional back there now. So uh, let me just say I'm announcing a prayer meeting for tonight 
but we, we got to remember that it's got to be five or less, so that prayer meeting will not happen. It's just my head got a little bit out of it, so I know the one's announced, but really that shouldn't happen, so we're going to wait until, I guess, at the end of the month, which is uh, January the 31st, it's a Monday, not this Monday, the following Monday, anything after the Monday, we'll be able to start up groups and stuff like that up to a point of 50% of capacity, and so, which is nice to get back and and uh, get rolling. Guys, we got to continue to uh, to be honorable uh, to people. We want to keep people safe, right? We really do. This is not against the church. I was saying at Seaway a little earlier, I can tell you what persecution looks like if you secretly drove here this morning, quickly rushed from your vehicle inside, and just hope that nobody saw you. That would be the church persecuted, right? What we're experiencing with COVID-19 is just restrictions. God, if anybody's being persecuted, it's actually the small business that we should be praying for, right, man? They been, and restaurants and gyms and all that stuff that we really, really need to pray for, amen? So um, we just continue on. It's good. Guys, I've got all kinds of uh, texts and emails from both churches. People like whether they came in contact with a positive. We have not been compromised, so you know. But the virus is out there, and I guess it's still going about. And uh, we just, I think now we're on the, the downward slope of it. And um, I guess uh, in the next while, maybe after vaccine number 11 or 12. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Just joking. I, I was saying to my wife, does it mean I got to go on the pill now? Like one time, that was like, and now they got a pill for this stuff, and I just don't know why it's going to end. But I, I can tell you some of my struggles right now is that I still arrive at the door at Canadian Tire. Not very many stores gets my money, right? And so uh, when I arrive at the door at Canadian Tire, I still got to go back to my truck. I think we're like two and a half years in. I still got to go back to my truck and get my mask. <laughs> Head back in again, because I'm not very good at this. I can't wait. The day that they say we don't have to wear a mask anymore, then uh, I'm going to throw away my truck, because that's where I stored them. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, we should pray for some folk. Uh, the end of the week, I got into the game a little bit, uh, and I never got to check in with some folk. I have, I've been talking to Rose uh, earlier the week, and, and she needs our prayers, and Cheryl needs to continue to have our prayers some things that's going on there, but maybe there's some needs that I don't know about, or I've forgotten, or whatever, and and is there other stuff that you would like to voice this morning? We need to pray for this person. I know Nicole sent me an email this morning, and I guess she was in contact with a positive case. She's testing negative and all that stuff, which is good, because she's open to go back to school tomorrow, and so... Uh, but anyway, uh, is there any other requests that we need to pray for or individuals? Yeah, go ahead, Bev. You're Bev, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So say, tell me the person again, your mother-in-law. Okay. Oh, wow, eh? Yeah, I know, guys, there's people. There's another guy in Ottawa. His kidneys won't start up, and he's connected with Seaway Church, right? And so they put him on a dialysis. Man, it's, it's a tough one. It is, and I think we got to be careful, right? We really do. We need to be cautious and continue to be cautious. I know, I don't know what's going on with me. I've not dealt with, I don't, I, 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 uh, I, I get so emotional. Like, I, 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 I can be sitting and I'm telling you that I can break down and, cr and cry at the drop of an ant. And these overwhelming emotions, and I don't think, like I don't know, because I'm not like a doctor or anything, I don't think I'm having a nervous breakdown. It's just been a long time, right? I'm, I, I, I've, I've had fatigue all my life with, with like tired because I put so long a days in and stuff like that. And, and maybe sometimes we... 
We, we give out so much that maybe when the tank is empty, I don't know. It's maybe some surfaces. I don't know what. But I want to tell you this so you don't think you got a leader that's unstable that can't lead. I've, I've shared that completely with my life group. So you know that. Because I think that's important that we get in small groups. And, and my guys all know. And my mentor talk to, talks to me regularly. And then my darling wife, I, in times like this, we just pull close together and walk and pray. And, and I can't imagine what's going on in people's lives. And the same might be true of you. And so, so and, and I don't want to discount what's happening in the sense of all of this. And, and guys, I don't know if it's close to being over. But I do know this, that my God is able to get us to the other side. When Jesus told his disciples, let's go to the other side, guess what happened? They got to the other side. There might have been storms. They might have been rebuked because of their faith. They might have looked at the waves. Get it? They might have looked at the waves more than they looked at Jesus and thought they were going to perish because of the waves. But they did get to the other side. And we need to trust God with that. And so, uh, so uh, we should pray. We should pray. Is there anybody else? You got a prayer request? All right, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So we should pray for Josh. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Kim. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Christian, how's Rebecca? Tired. So we need to continue. Rebecca's really wrestling. Rebecca plays on the drums, and she's she's a uh, she, she's struggling. I don't need to ex tell you everything, but, but she needs our prayers, right? So, Terry, I think you put your hand up. Your daughters. Come on, let's just pray, right? So, we need to ask God to, to minister and touch. And, uh, and uh, just make stuff, feel stuff. Uh, I think I sent an email a week or so ago, and I had all the big list of things that we needed to pray for. The scripture reference that came to my mind is many are the afflictions of God's people, but God healed them all. <laughs> right? And that's the God that we serve. Amen. So let's just ask God to touch some leaders. Amen. So Father, Lord, we give you this stuff. We give you Josh. Like, like we give you daughters. Lord, we give you husbands and leaders. Lord, you can heal COVID. You could heal the lady that's in the hospital right now, really struggling, got pneumonia first, now COVID. You can heal that and make her better right now in the name of Jesus. You're able to touch folk and so God we just we just lay this at your feet you're the healer we care about what's going on in people's lives Lord we don't want to be a church that don't pray or don't have faith God we want to be a people of prayer with strong faith that our God is able to touch in Jesus name Amen. I want to do some worship. Let's do a couple songs of worship uh, this morning. God bless you, team. Stand with us. Lord, I spoke a word. You were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. 
For I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Only overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. All the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so kind to me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it. Still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves a 99. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it, still you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Your I live. 
and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. Be overcome by your presence, Lord. 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 Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us 
us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Wow, God, we thank you for your presence this morning. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. I can remember uh, the first. We're going to let the kids go in a second. And Oh, Denise, if you want to head out, you can with them. Yeah. Uh, I can remember the first sermon I preached when I was in Bible college. And um, it, was, um, it was out of 1 Corinthians 15. And it was, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And so... Just thinking of that sermon this morning, in a few moments, I'm going to invite Julie to come. And Julie is, um, is uh, I'm going to say, one of Denise and my daughters, spiritually. Okay, we've been mentoring her. She's in our second course at, at Bible College in university. And she got a, she'll tell you in a while, she got a nursing degree. But now God seems to be calling her into something and and we've been mentoring her, and I got, a, I got a chance to evaluate her in a little bit. I can remember another sermon I preached. Uh, it was an ecumenical services in Cornwall, and uh, I can remember the pastor in Cornwall. He used to always struggle because I would, I would always dress in blue jeans and casual, and uh, he would, even if he went out to the grocery store, he'd dress in a suit, George Bussey. And I can remember the first sermon I preached at that ecumenical service was you can't get to heaven without good looks, right? And, and, and uh, that would probably knock some of us out, but the good looks was that different stuff, you know, a good look at this. But I can tell you this for certain, that the preacher this morning is, a better, lo- lo- better, is better looking than me. Okay, and so I'm going to invite Julie to come. I'm so encouraged with her and blessed that she's part of our service. And uh, I I asked her to come here too because I thought she'd need a double evaluation. I'm going to clean up the mic a bit. It's all yours. All right. Thanks, Roger. Awesome. How are you guys doing? (laughs) Yes, uh, Roger and Denise have been amazing. Um, I feel like I have a whole new appreciation uh, uh, for Roger today after coming here after doing another service. So you guys are going to have the best of, of my fruit because I've figured out what's not going to work and uh, brought the best here. So thanks, Roger. Before I begin, let's pray. I want to uh, I want to just pray a special uh, blessing on Roger and Denise. Uh, they've been amazing um, pastors, like both of them, right? And uh, for me personally, I feel like I feel that emotional um, burden you've been feeling, I affirm that. I was emotionally wrecked yesterday, eh? Like, I just, <laughs> emotions, and uh, it just gives you a whole new understanding um, for what people are going through when, you, you, when you're going through it yourself. So let's just pray. God, just, uh, this is your business here today, Lord, and, and just give me the words, Father. I just ask that all of your business get done today. Like, everything you need me to say and remember to say, God, may that just get done. And just have a special blessing on Roger and Denise, Lord. We thank you for their, for their willingness to serve, and we just thank you so much for everything that you're doing and that you're going to do. Agaria, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, so I'm so glad to see everybody. I wasn't sure. I've never really spoke in Cardinal, really, before. Um, so I'm so always happy to see you guys. You guys did amazing. Everybody who did all the music, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I think I'm seeing a theme here with the beards. Like, 
I love this. Like you over there, Jim and Roger, and are we braiding them? Like what is going on? Like what is going to happen? Like <laughs> it's like every time it just gets a little longer, right? Like <laughs> it's, uh, I've seen people with beads in them, and and Dale, you always are so sweet and and kind, and always have a good word for all of us. And is Natalie here? Is Natalie here? She's in the back. She's with the kids. And, and Denise, I can't pick on her, of course, because um, she's gone. But um, I was, I was going to tell Natalie that it doesn't it always look amazing here at Christmas. Like, she's always got it all decked out, and, and it always looks beautiful. So you can just tell her that I, I said that. And I'm always thinking, like, about uh, this future place. And in, uh, in John, it talks about Jesus. And he left his disciples, and he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I always think about that place that God's going to prepare for me and how everything's going to be clean <laughs> and how my dishes are going to always be done. And maybe there'll be cookies I can eat and all that. And I just, I just think Natalie, like, I don't know, this is not biblical, but maybe Natalie will have some nice, beautiful Christmas trees in her house. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to look like. I'd like a soaker tub. I, I don't know. Who knows, right? <laughs> so today I want to talk to you guys about life um, being all about perspective. So so Steve the other day was uh, was talking to me in the car, and he was talking about, he was texting with his friend about this G-string phenomenon, and, and I, I looked at him, and I'm like, this can't be what I'm thinking. And he's like, yeah, like, I'm always so frustrated. I always have to fix my G-string, and it always just, it snapped the other day, and, and it, it's so frustrating. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a third string up on the guitar, and, and once you figure that out. It's all about perspective. So once you have that, it's, it's important to know. So um, just wouldn't we just have a better perspective? We are only seeing our lives and this little bit that God is giving us and showing us. But God has a perspective. He sees it all. He sees why, why things are happening in the bigger picture. And if we only had more perspective, maybe our pain, maybe our frustrations wouldn't be so frustrating. Natalie, I was just saying kudos to you for your beautiful decorations at Christmas. Yeah, a round of applause for her because I just, I come in here and I am always blown right away. So um, today I'm going to talk about the perspective of jealousy. So I don't know, do you guys have, like Star Wars or do we have any Star Wars fans? Yes, one, two. Okay, so <laughs> we're we're the small mi minority and um, I've had to read through the synoptic gospels and so that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke and they all say the same thing and, and, and it's, it's school, right? So it's boring, like boring, right? But the Bible is amazing and I love the Bible and I love to read the Bible but I hate school, right? I hate school but I love God. So it's like a conflict, <laughs> okay? So luckily you guys don't have to read Matthew, Mark, and Luke and say Luke said this and Mark said this and uh, so it's been very interesting. So it's trying to piece it together. Like there's the trilogy, right? The original four, five, and six. And then there's one, two, and three in Star Wars. And sorry, I'm a nerd. Okay. If you don't know that about me, it's good we get that, to, good we get that on the table. And then there's like the Mandalorian. And then there's Boba Fett. And you're trying to piece this all together. And I'm sorry for all of those who have missed out on the wonderful world of Star Wars. I recommend it. <laughs> so it's not biblical. We don't need to watch Star Wars. But um, the perspective of jealousy, did you know jealousy is one of the names of God? It actually is. So Exodus 34, 14. For you shall not worship any other God, for your Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous, impassioned God, demanding what is rightfully and uniquely his. God is jealous for you. He is jealous of your time and your attention and what's rightfully his. Did you know that? I think that's so cool because I don't know about you guys, but I've been jealous. I've had that like, oh, they do everything better than me <laughs> moment. I don't know if you know anybody like that. They're just, they're just, they're better at everything. <laughs> like, how does that happen? I love them. <laughs> so we all know Jesus and this man willingly laid down his life for us. Nobody took it from him. He actually willingly laid down his life for us. Um, and John, the disciple, says in uh, John 10, 17, 18, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, so that I may take it back. No one takes it away from me. But I lay it down voluntarily. I am authorized and have power to lay it down and give it up. And I am authorized and have power to take it back. 
would you guys lay down your life for someone? I've been thinking a lot about this as I've been, par- am I allowed to walk up here? Like, I, I don't even know, am I still on the screen? It's fine if I'm not. You guys don't need to see me. Hey, online. Shout out to online. <laughs> um, I've been thinking a lot. And we all have a lot to live for. You know, we have family. We have, we have kids. We have parents. We have sisters. We have brothers. And I want to say that I would lay down my life for Kim. I want to say I'd do that. Roger is evaluating me, so I am definitely laying down my life for you. <laughs> that is happening. But somebody actually laid down our, his life for us. The only reason Jesus died, other than laying down his life, of course, but the, the things that led up to his crucifixion were, was jealousy. The religious leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees, were jealous of the amazing miracles that Jesus was doing and all his depth and knowledge and understanding of the Bible. And they didn't want the Romans to come and take over their nation. So they decided this guy has got to go. Wow. Wow, all the amazing things that Jesus was doing, this amazing man. It even talks about in the Bible, when Jesus died, I just love this part. It's not in my notes. But when Jesus died in the tomb, it talks about it in Luke. He didn't just leave his burial clothes in the tomb. He folded them. Like, how amazing was this man? I mean, folding, Steve. Folding. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's actually quite better than me. But um, this amazing man that the Jews rejected. The Jews decided they were rejecting him, and Jesus was very sad. But he gave us the news. He, he went on to the Gentiles. Hello, Gentiles. <laughs> he went on to us, and we went and spread the news. Um, of God's good works and good good news. So I don't know if you guys ever knew about this about me, but I used to really struggle with low self-esteem. I always, um, for years and years, and uh, it's really exhausting being around somebody who always needs to be propped up. And, and Steve could tell you all about it. And, and still sometimes it, it pops up in my mind, but God has really taken that away and other things have come in. Anyway, we're always struggling with something, right? So let God build you up. We need to go and see what God says about us, that we are royalty, that we are heirs to the throne. We got to stop listening to what Satan is saying, that we're failures, that we're not good at anything, that we'll never, that we'll never accomplish anything, that we're always going to be stuck where we are. In 1 Peter 2, verse 9, it says, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Jealousy is a really dangerous thing. It didn't work out well for Daniel. His uh, King Darius was about to appoint him over the realm, the realm back in the day, right? What realm? And his coworkers were like, that's not happening. <laughs> we are going to devise a plan to kill him. And it didn't work out well for them, eh? They ended up to be, actually, they, the Bible says that they were like eaten by the lions before they even reached the ground. So there, there you go. It goes, goes around, comes around. And the first sin in the Bible, Cain versus Abel. So Abel just loved God. He just wanted to give him the best of his, his flock. He just, he, he just loved him. And, and Abel um, did that. And Cain was like just grabbing some vegetables off the ground <laughs> and throwing them. Like, no, he wasn't throwing them. But he was just giving them to God because he had to. Because he, he didn't want to give God the best. And then God was really pleased with, with Abel. And, and Cain saw this, and he got so mad and, and jealous. And je- God told him, he said, smarten up. He said, if you don't get it together, you're going to sin. And, and sure enough, we all know how this story ends. God says in Genesis 4, verse 7, if you do well, believing in me and doing what is acceptable and pleasing to me, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, but ignore my instructions, sin crouches at your door. And its desire is for you to overpower you, but you must master it. God, he warned him. He's like, (laughs) 
You better get it together. Is uh, Anyway, we all know what happened. It was the first crime scene in the Bible. When Steve went away to police forensic processing detective, what is it, ident forensic detective training, they actually used that from the Bible. They said that's the first crime scene ever known to man and how Abel's blood was crying out to God for forensic processing. <laughs> so, you had an interesting job, Steve. <laughs> so, God always wants us to die to ourselves. It's really, really hard to die to ourselves. I, 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 the last several years, God has really been working on me. I don't know if you guys know, but I like have a lot of opinions. <laughs> And God has really helped me to keep my mouth shut. Because not everybody needs to know what I think, right? Like, I, there's times and a place. Um, but if you didn't realize I was feisty, God has really done a really good work on me. He, is, <laughs> he has brought me to another level of, of, of where I need to be. Um, so the religious leaders had Jesus killed because they were jealous. And the church folks got so caught up on the ins and the outs of the law does that sound like COVID protocol? The COVID protocols, like everything we need to do, the COVID restrictions. Are you guys so caught up in that that you're forgetting how to love? I am. I totally am. I forget how to love. I really do. And, um, and being vaccinated versus unvaccinated and blah, blah, blah. There's many, many COVID examples. The main thing is I'm missing love. Jesus, um, we don't have really leprosy around anymore. It's a really, really contagious virus. And there was no cure. There was no vaccine. But, but Jesus went and he laid hands on the people who had leprosy. And I'm not saying we need to be dumb. Don't be dumb. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend doing that unless God really, really told you to. I was, um, I was able to pray the other day. This, this person, this young, very young woman, was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of cancer. And I had full PPE. Jesus never had any of that. I had a mask and goggles and gloves. And she was so upset. She was sobbing. And I was able to put my hand, rub my hand on her back, and just pray with her. And I don't know if she would have ever known that. And I was praying in my head. She didn't know I was praying. But I don't know if she felt I know that she would have felt God's presence. And for that moment in time, maybe a small moment in time, she felt love. And uh, we just really need to make sure that we're not becoming so obsessed with the laws that we don't love. Um, that was what the religious leaders were doing because, oh my gosh, like, do you guys read the first and second Kings? It's like <laughs> so frustrating to read. Like these, Jew these Jewish people, these people of God, they were like had a bad king and they were like worshiping idols. And then a good king would come and rebuild the temple. And they'd be like, yeah, God, we love you. And then it would be like back and forth. And it's so frustrating. And you're like, people, get it together. Let's go. Like, this is ridiculous. But you think about now. And you think about our phones. Oh. <laughs> and I'm not saying your phone is an idol. Not at all. But is it? Is it taking your time and attention away from God? I've decided to consciously try to grab my Bible and coffee too. No, I need my coffee, and, and Steve, you need your coffee because I'm going to throw you under the bus. <laughs> We've all done dumb things and don't have coffee. You don't need to love God and drink coffee, but, but I do um, <laughs> really badly. And Steve was making coffee the other day, and you had the milk, and he was putting it in the dishwasher. And I'm like, this is how it is without coffee in our world. And, um, and I'm, <laughs> I'm really just really trying to make sure that I'm giving God the first of my fruit. Before I'm, I'm talking to anybody, I'm just really trying to, to just spend that time. And God blesses that time. He's just showing me stuff in this Bible that I've never seen before. And I've been a Christian my whole life. And, and things are just popping up. I'm like, I didn't know that. It's, it's very interesting. And I need God time to love. I don't feel like loving everybody by myself. 
It doesn't come from within me. And we all have people in our lives that are just a little harder to love. Like, it, it's just really, really hard. And, um, but we need God's help. He, we need that supernatural love. I don't know if you guys know this. I do run. I've been running since I was a teenager. I've also been diagnosed with arthritis when I was really young. I don't really talk about it much. But I have arthritis in my hands and my feet. And I don't always feel like running. Like when the elderly ladies come into my doctor's office and talk about their trigger finger, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but I can't say that because they'll look at me like I'm weird. So I'm like, I totally get it. Trigger finger is something that happens with arthritis. Don't worry. You'll get there someday. Okay. So, <laughs> so I don't feel like running, but I do it because I know that I've got to take care of myself and get some sort of exercise. And I just, I try not to think about it. And that's like loving. Sometimes we don't want to, but we're commissioned to love. That's the great commission. Love God and love your neighbor. And if that neighbor is really annoying, you still need to love them. <laughs> it's not an option. If you want to get into heaven, those are the two things that God does say are the two greatest commandments. And I'm not just saying that we're not getting into heaven if we don't love God. We absolutely. But God has also given us a need to love one another. So back to being super jealous of Jesus. The religious leaders, they were watching him. They were watching him and seeing him if he would heal people on Sundays. In one particular instance, Jesus did a lot of healings on Sundays. But he had a man with a hand, and he prayed over him, and he was healed, and his hand was healed, and he was able to be a productive member of society. And they were watching him beforehand to see, are you going to heal? And if you heal, we want to kill you. <laughs> that is the reason and the motivation for wanting to put Jesus on the cross. That spirit of heart and heart still lives on today in, in our churches, unfortunately. Like a cabinet with chipping paint, it might look good from far away, but the closer you get, you realize there's chips on it, and it's not perfect, and if we spend enough time with someone, they'll know if we love them. They'll know if they see God's love through us by how we act, how we treat them. Right now, being vaccinated versus unvaccinated is tearing families apart. We might not love people's life decisions, but God is the ultimate judge. And we are just called to love, even if we don't agree with them. I have some really strong opinions about it all, but I keep it in my head. Because I really need people to feel comfortable around me, to feel like I love them. And I'm not perfect. Trust me, like if someone comes up with me without a mask, I'm like, whew, okay, that's fine. I think it's because maybe with the nursing and everything, it's just I'm not... You know, I'm a little COVID sensitive, but you know what? I'm like, you know what? That's okay. God loves them, and so do I, most of the time. <laughs> so I want to tell you guys about um, one time I was camping with my cousin, and, and they were kind of, like, strict, uh, my cousin and my cousin's family. They didn't swim with the boys and the girls. Like, it was just, it, it was just kind of a funny thing. So um, I liked a guy. And he was at another campsite, and we went walking down the beach together. And they thought I was holding his hand. And I wish, like, he's not like Steve, obviously, but he was, when I was 12, like, <laughs> And uh, I got back, and they wouldn't talk to me. Not just the kids, but the adults, too. And I don't know if you've ever been in a household that doesn't talk to you when they're mad. I didn't. I had never had that happen in my life. I didn't know what was going on. And these people were church people. And I still don't know what happened there. <laughs> but I'm, I'm fine now. Just a little emotionally scarred, but I'm fine. So <laughs> it's just we're called to love. It's a great commission. How dare we ostracize people because of their life decisions? I'm, I'm hitting a nerve. I know I am. And it's my own nerve, too. Like, it is so hard to love people when they don't agree with what I think. <laughs> So Jesus goes on, and he raises Lazarus from the dead. And uh, it says in John eleven forty eight, if we, oh, the Pharisees and chief priests conniving here, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. Seriously, 
Everyone will believe in him. And the Romans, they'll come and take away our holy place, our temple, and our nation. They were just so worried about losing the church that they were actually prepared to kill Jesus and Lazarus. They had planned to kill Lazarus, the man raised from the dead. Like, honestly, we are, they were so spiritually blind. And we can all be spiritually blind unless God reveals things to us. Even the disciples struggled with jealousy. This one gets me. Like, the disciples are like, hey, mom, 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 go talk to Jesus. Ask him if we can be on the left and right side. So the sons of Zebedee, James and John, they got their mom to go ask Jesus if they could be on the right and the left side with Jesus in heaven. It's just, and the other disciples were like, what the heck? What the heck? We're so, they were so mad at him. Matthew, at them, Matthew 20, verse 24. When the other ten heard about this, they were resentful and angry with the two brothers. And it's just jealousy. Jealousy. We all have it. We've all had to deal with it. King Saul, he lost his anointing because he didn't do what God asked him to do. And that anointing was put on David. And David went on to kill Goliath. And then Saul got jealous. He got jealous. They talked about the 10,000s that, uh, that David was, ki- uh, was, was killing and only the thousands that Saul was killing. And then he chased him around for four years trying to kill him because he had a thought in his head that wasn't right. David never intended to kill Saul. He had many chances to kill Saul twice, but he didn't. And he actually got pushed to the throne after Saul died. He didn't run there. But Saul wasted all that time and energy being jealous of something that wasn't even right. How many things are we missing out on? Because we're so focused on what everybody else is doing. What's going on to the left, what's going on to the right, all of their abilities and their talents, and they're doing it, and they're doing it better than us. But God has something special planned for you. You're not going to look like the person to the left or the right of you. Thank goodness, right? Right? <laughs> just, just a joke. Just a joke. <laughs> so if you go to work and you haven't communicated with your boss and you're just doing your thing and it's been a few days and you're, you're thinking you're doing what you're supposed to do and then you finally talk to your boss and you were way off track. They never wanted to you to do what you did. That kind of goes with what we, our relationship with God. If we don't have communication with him every day, we don't know what he wants us to do. There might be something completely different, and we might have completely missed out on what opportunity he had. So I can't guarantee to you that God isn't coming back. Jesus isn't coming back. I don't know when he's coming back. We might not even make it to tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen when I walk out that door this afternoon. I can't guarantee to you. And if you guys have not had the opportunity to make that commitment to Christ, I want to encourage you, it is not a decision you're ever going to regret. God only has good things for us. Um, As the worship team comes forward, and I'll conclude, um, I want to encourage you to cling to God. And I don't know if any of you are feeling like me and just really need a renewal of love. I really do every day, but I really do, and during this season when we're all so tired of everything, (laughs) I just want to pray like a special anointing for those, if you want to raise your hand, anybody who's feeling like they need more love, and that that is me for sure, and we're just going to pray for you. We're just going to ask God has his Holy Spirit upon you and just renews you with this fresh love for people. Thank you, Jesus, for being here. Father, we just ask that you have your hand upon each and every one of us. And we just ask that you just renew our spirits, Lord. We're exhausted. We're tired. We're we're in Canada in the winter, God. And have your hand upon all of us who need a renewal of love. That we might spread your joy and your good news to the people because we love them. And we just thank you for this opportunity to be here, Lord, to praise your name, to bring honor and glory to you. May you just be with every single person, Lord, here and online. May they just feel the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit and a renewal in their heart and soul that only you can do, Agaria, Jesus. And we just thank you in your name, Lord. Amen. In the presence of us.
holy God, I bow down and I adore. You reveal the secrets of my heart, and I am shaken to the I know we could always get in a rush, eh, to just get out and go home. And um, I think of the story that Julie brought up about Saul and David. And, and uh, I don't know how many know this, but when they were going to anoint Saul to be king, and, and, and uh, it says he was hid away in the baggage, right? He, he, he hid, and, and Saul was taller than everybody else, a head above everybody else, the scripture says. But there was some stuff going on in his life with with self-esteem, and, and so he might have felt jealousy early, right? Some issues that caused him to, to not feel like he measured up, and so we might be in the room, and we don't feel like we measure up. Second story, and I'm not going to preach, I just want to show you, to, it was the, the lady with the two mites, and, and, uh, and, and like she instantly, with just two pennies, like, right, caught the eye of Jesus. She's not, her name is not mentioned. Right? Her name is not mentioned in the Bible. Like, sometimes the beggar's name wasn't mentioned. Right? But sometimes we try to earn it and, and, and we want to be noticed. Well, let's, let's, let's let Jesus, let's catch his eye with our commitment. Amen? We used to sing a song years ago. You want me to sing it for you? I'm, I'm in the singing. So here it goes. It says, uh, 
It says, root them out, get them gone. All the little bunnies in the fields of corn. Envy, jealousy, malice, and pride. They must never in our hearts abide. And so when it comes to jealousy, like let's see, if we need to take a moment, hey, Jim, a good singer, right? If you want me to get on the band with you, can I get, like, you want me to take Natalie out or something? Like, you think I got a better voice? Or, no, you don't want to deal with it right now. Okay, so, so, but guys, let's say, guys, that we need to, we got something going on in our hearts. Well, and, and, and we, we should have been noticed. We should have been recognized. We should have, you know, if we take a minute for this next song. Jim, that last song was really good, so you could stick with that one. But let's just take a moment to, to come before God. I can just say, God, I need some help with a situation, right? Because it's more important that you notice me. Because that lady was given her all, and that's what Jesus is looking for this morning is our all. Nobody's going to come around you. It's just you and God. Nobody wants to know your story this morning at least. Just God. And so you're just going to let him touch you, okay? So, Jim, sing it one more time, and then we'll close in prayer. In the presence of a holy God, I bow down and I adore. You reveal the secrets of my heart. I am shaken to the core. In the presence. 